number one, we have playing relax. So he's very famous of his layback playing. So I believe there is no behind the beat. It's layback playing, laid back playing. So there is tension and release. So playing with tension and playing with release. You have to play relax and you have to sound with impact. But <laughs> honestly, you see Mr. Get always sitting like this, relaxed. It's not very good for your back, but it's very good for your timing. So when you play with tension, I don't say one thing is better than the other. You get a completely different sound. If you see Taylor Hawkins playing with the Foo Fighters, it's full in tension. But you play more in front of the beat then. Number two, all right, sound dynamics. The dynamics are very important. So listen to your balance. You have three different pieces. You have a kick drum, you have a snare drum, and you have a hi-hat. So I always think like a producer in Logic in velocity. So when I produce a beat, I think of the velocity of the hi-hat, snare, and bass drum. The velocity is between 0 and 127. So you can play everything in velocity 127. That's also cool. But listen to yourself, and that's very important. Listen to how you sound, the dynamics. So what I think is very important in Mr. Getz playing is the, the bass drum has a very prominent place. Also the snare with a very small and relaxed movement. The hi-hat is always very light and relaxed. The kick drum 120, snare drum 127 and the hi-hat velocity 40. The toms is also very important, so hit everything at the sweet spot. What's the sweet spot? The sweet spot is like playing darts, bullseye. Okay, fundamental number three. Number one, three fundamental. It's the bass drum technique. It's a very special bass drum technique. So, tap dancing. Can you tap dance? <laughs> Me either. But it's very important. It's a technique developed out of tap dancing. A lot of drummers in the early days were very good tap dancers. So look on YouTube to videos about start learning tap dance. And you see that you have a very prominent role in a heel and a toe. Some people call it the heel toe technique, but I will call I prefer to call it the tap dance bass drum technique. A heel in tap dance is a very forced heel. So it's the same as with your hands, like this. That's the heel in tap dance. 
And the tap in tap dance, the, the front feet, the toe, is actually a heels down movement. So you have a... But the most important thing is that your heel is your down beat. When you play the basic beat, you play not like this, but you play... So the big difference is that you always are in release. So no tension at all. It's relaxed. When you do this, your leg is relaxed. When you do this, when you do this your leg is with a lot of tension. It's both okay. There's no good or bad. It are different sounds, different feel, different grooves. So you can do it both. When you play with the Arctic Monkeys, you have to have that you know, the tension. But if you want to play relaxed music, it has to be relaxed. The left feet is the same. And the nice thing is if you do an open high hat thing, you don't close it with your four feet, but you can close it. So they are tied together. Tip number four, the hand technique. So it's very rudimental and uh, it's a lot of traditional grip. But Mr. Get does both techniques. He does a lot of match grip. Nowadays, he plays a lot of match grip, but in the early days, he plays a lot of traditional grips, and he has the Bobby Thompson grip. So, you have to make, put your thumb like here, at this place. It's the Bobby Thompson grip. Look it up on the internet. It's a very open-handed, and with this, it's, it's very inspired by playing mallets. So, it's a little bit like Spivak. Your fulcrum is at your middle finger. You have two fingers here. And the other two are a little bit for the, the balance. It's loose. The looseness is very important. and make it bounce. You try to use the bounce. What's very important is what's your fulcrum so that, that your stick is good in your hands. Hit the sweet spot. That's the middle of the snare. Hear the difference. So my snare sounds the best. I don't play with rim, rim shot. Mr. Get is a very wrist kind of player. Fundamental number five. All right, sound. That's your sound. So, we have here a Yamaha Recording Custom. This is a Yamaha Recording Custom of 1988. 10 by eight, 12 by eight, 14 by 10, very small tom. And this is a 15 by 13. 
So that's a little bit different than Mr. Gat. He has here 16 by 14. And then the most important thing, it's the supraphonic snare drum. Ludwig supraphonic snare drum. And the choices of the head. So I, I have here the Evans hydraulics on my drum set and on my bass. And the heads are, he used these heads from the beginst 70s till begin 80s. And then he changed to pinstripes. So uh, I love these heads on a Yamaha because you get really the dry Steve Gap. The snare drum heads, a diplomat fiber skin of Remo, so a diplomat because that's the thinnest fiber skin, and a diplomat as a resonant. And of course, the most important thing, the ring. The bottom head is very high, and the, uh, the top head, you tune it for your taste, so sometimes low, sometimes a little higher. The snares have to be really tight, that's important. Not so many snares, just a normal snare bed, not 24, I don't know what, how many, 50. Everybody, everything is pitched very high in the 80s. So now he has a little bit of different sound, but my sound that I love is the Steve Gadd sound of the 70s and the 80s. So very high pitch, the bass drum is very high. The toms are very... Very small toms, very high hi-hat. This is an A Siljan, no K, but an A, but from the 50s, but a 14 inch, but it's very high. Symbol, very high. So, and of course, you are not a fan of Steve Gadd if you don't have the black Steve Gadd sticks. That's the most important thing with sound. You have to get the sound out of the drums. These were the top five fundamentals of Steve Gadd. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video and leave a comment for topics, questions, anything you want. Till next time.